Now, the other day I showed you this beautiful cutting sequence. I'm talking about this beauty here. That's right. And I was thinking, why not adding something more to the mix, just like so. And then we got something nice going on on the table. Let's see. We got here a nice full house with three aces and a high pair, which should do the job, right? <laughs> Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe. Now this year, and if you are watching from the future, I'm talking 2020. <laughs> if there is a future, you know, <laughs> you never can tell. It's a crazy year, you know. Anyway, we not only have been surviving so far, it's uh, August, 11th of August recording this. <laughs> we have also been extremely productive so far this year by walking through expert car technique by Jean Hugard and Frederick Broé in live sessions here on this channel. And there we discovered or we stumbled upon a gambler's false cut on page 78. Looks something like this in the explanation. Gambler's false cut, also known as up to the ladder. And this is truly a beauty, which I'm gonna show you how to do this today. However, in a modified version from the version explained in the book. And by the way, if you are watching for the first time today, welcome to the channel. My name is Ot Marios, and this is just what I do. You will find relevant links to all of my videos always up above in the info cards as well as down below in the info box with all of my material organized in tutorial series playlists on my channel page. All of this for free and it's going down thanks to the art maniacs who make it happen with a pledge on Patreon. Once again, guys, thank you so much. You are rocking awesome. In order for everybody to follow me along here quite easily, first I will explain the version of this beautiful false cutting sequence that I prefer and then I will show you how this differs from the version explained in the book. And then I will explain why I prefer the modified version over the version in the book, right? Okay, let's get started here. Book aside, we are getting started with a simple undercut and we immediately catch a break with the flash of the tip of our thumb. Looks something like this. Now, in one of the early tutorials in this series on table work, I do explain very much in detail how to hold the cards properly while cutting, cutting them in this manner and also how to catch the break um, for all kinds of false cutting sequences. You will find this tutorial once again up in the info cards as well down below in the info box in case you need to catch up on this technique. So we undercut, we catch a break and then we immediately undercut once again and re restore the order of the deck again. However, we do place the portion out jog to the right a little bit. And this is what's happening next. Now we strip out a bottom portion from this outshocked pack and we bring it on top of the whole construction, aligning the cards with the portion on the very bottom. Now we strip out the whole pack, which is outshocked, and we position it outshocked once again. One more time, we strip out a portion from the bottom of the out jog portion and we align it with the bottom portion. And then we proceed until we have completed the cut. You see what's happening here now? The first round is easy, right? We cut a portion from the bottom to the top and then we restore the order again. But now it's getting interesting. Now we're getting to this climbing up the ladder sequence, this climbing sequence kind of, you know, we take a bottom portion and from the positioning of the packs right now, when we place it here, aligning with the bottom portion and we strip this out, we just position it where it belongs, right? And we just repeat this motion. So we do not interfere with the order of the cards at all. Do not underestimate the correct positioning of all them fingers throughout the whole operation, especially the fingers of the left hand right there here at the outer left corner from the magician's point of view. Now, we got the pinky here at the short side at the corner, at the outer left corner. We got the ring finger at the long side, right there next to the pinky at the corner from the long side, however. There goes the middle finger and the index, as usual, rests curled in or lightly stretched out 
resting on the top of the pack. Now, check this out. It's almost like playing an instrument. When I cut the cards to align a package with the package on the table, I need to lift my three fingers here to make space, right? When I cut a portion to jog it to the right, I only need to move two fingers. So this becomes an alternating motion. Three fingers, two fingers, three fingers, two fingers. Let me give this a try in slow-mo, which is going to melt my brain probably, but this is how it feels like, like playing an instrument, like playing the flute, three fingers, and two fingers, and three fingers, and two fingers. Can you see this? Three fingers, and two fingers. Obviously, throughout the course of time and decent practice, this becomes a very tiny and subtle motion. I'm exaggerating here um, for the reasons of explaining properly in a tutorial, right? Now, the best thing about it is that the package that remains at the bottom of the deck, which is also building up throughout the whole shuffle, right, is always secured with the pinky at the outer left corner, but also most of the time with the ring finger. So pinky and ring finger, they lock in here at the outer left corner. So the bottom package is secured, which enables you to really go nuts with your right hand, almost throwing the cards onto the whole pack when you do the shuffle. Of course, after a little while of practice, really do not underestimate the proper positioning of the fingers. And also, whenever a package goes down to the table or goes down from the top to the package on the bottom, make sure to lock in here with the pinky and the ring finger to get this under control. And then you will have such more control over the whole operation. Also, the dominant hand, in my case the right hand, has quite some delicate work to do throughout the whole operation. Because as soon as we have gone for our first round with the break and the two undercuts, we now go into an alternating motion of stripping a bunch of cards from the bottom of the outjog package and then taking hold of the whole package to once again just clip a bunch of cards from the bottom between our fingers and then again the whole package. And this is more difficult than you might realize at first glance. Here's how this goes down in my hands with the proper grip I explained in the uh, early tutorial in this tutorial series, right? So first I clip the lower portion between thumb and third finger. I catch the break and once again I clip the lower portion between thumb and third finger. Now I position the pack out jogged and once again it's thumb and third finger that now takes a portion from the bottom. I swing it and now I switch to the second finger, thumb and second finger and I keep it going in this climbing up motion with the thumb and the second finger. I don't know why, but it just works for me. And don't you worry flashing out jogging the packages. This ain't a magician's fooler. Once you know it, you will always recognize it, right? However, perform this casually with a decent performance speed and a smooth flow of motions and your onlookers will be fooled. And here is how this version differs from the version in Expert Car Technique by Jean Hugard and Frederick Bruy. In the book, it's explained that we're starting by out jogging a portion to the right. Then we strip a bottom portion from this out jog, center it, and then when we strip out the out jog portion, it's time to catch the break. We're catching the break in the middle of the whole operation. Then we do the climbing up sequence by catching the break and that just doesn't feel right. To finish this off by restoring the break. And guys, it's August in 2020, it's freaking hot and the camera is overheating again. Let's do this until the whole place explodes. Doing the whole cutting sequence with holding the break 
pro pretty much throughout the whole time. It's just one complicated thing too much all to Gather. So I do really prefer the version where we catch the break, we immediately restore the break and then we are free to go completely nuts with the climbing up sequence. Doesn't that make sense? I think so. And that's that. Guys, I hope you had a blast of a time and enjoyed this watch and also learned something today. I love this very much and the up the ladder is a really nice thing if you make it work in your hands to, um, you know, put in there once in a while. Guys, I'm out of here for now. You know the drill. Subscribe.